This week has been incredible for new Llama 3 fine tunes that are pushing the boundaries of performance in open source LLMs even farther. And this week I got a really nice surprise, which was a new drop from Maxime Lebon, one of my favorite developers in the open LLM space to follow on Twitter. So please follow him if you already aren't. We've reviewed previous versions and they've previously been quite impressive. And I don't think Neural Daredevil 8B is any different. So basically this is another take using DPO fine tuning with some pretty interesting methods where basically he now claims to have a model again called Daredevil 8B which has the highest MMLU score among 8 billion parameter models on the open LLM leaderboard. It's built off of a few different versions of Llama 3. There are a whole set of models that have been used and incorporated into this fine tuning. And the performance numbers are really pretty impressive. And they've been out long enough that I think this is really an accurate portrayal of this model's capabilities. So what's interesting is Maxime in this case uses a specific form of fine tuning called DPO and another method for improving model performance called obliteration. So if you've seen these obliterated models coming up on the LLM leaderboard or on Hugging Face, that just means they're using this method to try to increase their performance. So what's interesting is Maxime here says, I managed to create an uncensored version that outperforms Llama 3 Instruct 8B on every benchmark of nine tested. So let's get into what this actually means, what obliteration is, how Maxime used obliteration and DPO fine tuning to achieve this performance, and whether or not this is really better than Llama 3 8B and a number of other tools you, on the things that I use open source LLMs for on a day-to-day -day basis as a software engineer. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So this model from Maxime is pretty interesting and I wanna unpack some of the underlying bits that actually make this model so impressive, specifically the methods used and a bit more of what they mean. I'm gonna to link to a few other pages that cover kind of the underlying algorithms a bit more. I'm just gonna go over what makes these kind of function and why they're better than, than some older techniques we've covered before on this channel. So if you follow the LLM leaderboard, you've probably seen this term obliteration in a few different model names. So you'll see like Llama 3, 8, something obliterated or something DPO. And what's interesting is Obliteration or ablation is actually something that's been being used in LLMs for quite some time. And I wanna hop into a bit of what that is. But first I want to go into the core kind of reasoning um, and kind of why it's named the way it is and what makes this model so interesting. So previously when it came to improving the performance of these models, merging was not something we necessarily saw. We saw a lot of cherry picking from other data sets, trying to fine tune on top, but merging was not one of those. And what I think is cool here is Maxime has gone a little bit deeper and given some insight into actually why Daredevil is maybe called Daredevil. And it's likely called Daredevil because Daredevil 8B is a mega merge of a few different versions of Llama 3 8B, specifically nine different models. And what was used to do this were um, Dare ties. Now, technically, these are actually just two different kinds of algorithms that are actually used for merging models. If you've used MergeKit, you've probably heard of a few other um, different kind of Franken-merge algorithms that are quite common. And dare and ties are now relatively new in this space. You know, in other CS papers, if you read these, you might see um, tries or other things referred to as ties that are just relations between um, like a graph. But in this case, I think these are just these two kind of newer algorithms used for merging that we're seeing here. And it's cool because we haven't really seen this out in the open a lot with Llama 3. And uh, this was really popular as a method for improving performance with um, specifically Mixtral 8x7b. And I do like that Maxime is very out in the open when he says yes, like the entire point, just like it was in Daredevil 7b, is to maximize the MMLU score, uh, just kind of as an interesting exercise in seeing where we can improve performance. Obviously, um, Eric Hartford and the Dolphin models generally try to hit a generalized improvement in performance across a number of benchmarks. And it's cool to see that the motivation for Daredevil is still just maximizing out MMLU as much as possible. And right here is the family tree. So you can see that there are a few more than nine different merges going on here, but it is cool to see this breakdown. And there's a bit more information here that's available in the Hugging Face page. So you can see that the green models are kind of the core bits. And then you can see all these other models that are contributing here. And basically these are all obviously Llama 3 8B fine tunes. So we have some work from Endos Research. We have some of Maxime's previous work with Orpo Llama 3 8B. This is a great example of why I think it's interesting to watch the progression of models and to see 
all the models that show up on the LLM leaderboard, even though all of them might not have stellar performance or might be like 400th in the 8B category. And that's because each of these have a bit of performance or a capability that in theory, Maxime wanted to see expressed to some extent in this model. And these dare and ties algorithms when it comes to merging these um, let you kind of selectively pick and choose. And each of these merging algorithms kind of has a different way of expressing what it thinks is important in terms of extracting skills from these models. Now, what's interesting is initially Neural Daredevil 8B was actually still censored. So he actually initially benchmarked and then used FailSpy's obliteration notebook to remove Meta's alignment. So again, obliteration or ablation just means selectively removing part of an AI model with like a scalpel basically. So this is something that's been around for some time. It's actually a term that harkens back to the time of uh, early neurosurgery, where if you were to ablate something, it actually meant you were removing part of a brain during brain surgery, which is kind of interesting. So it's funny that we're carrying this over into the now neural and artificial intelligence space where we're just removing certain weights and certain values that represent what's going on. So he used FailSpy's obliteration notebook, which is just kind of a Python notebook, obviously, to remove Meta's alignment. And what's interesting is there was a slight degradation in performance of one to 2%, but it wasn't wild. So you can see here, this is the open LLM leaderboard, and you can see that Daredevil 8B and Daredevil 8B obliterated do vary in performance just a little bit. And what's interesting is I actually hadn't seen this done before. So what I didn't know is that you can actually quote unquote heal uh, performance deficits from ablation using DPO fine tuning. Um, so unlike SFT, it doesn't lobotomize the instruct model. Um, for those of you who don't know, like SFT is really commonly problematic when you're working with an instruct model that already has some of its inference space already directed a certain way. And when you screw with it, sometimes it can have negative consequences with performance. So then he took an existing data set that he had, Orpo DPO Mix 40K, and trained on that a bit with Oxalotl. And wildly, it actually basically picked up the performance and within margin of error. And now their MMLU scores are basically within margin of error, which is pretty cool. And this even holds up across a number of different benchmarks. So even though the initial goal was only to hit MMLU scores, it's still really, really good. Maxime isn't done yet. He says here that there's still room for improvement with GSM 8K, which initially had some issues because it's just too underrepresented in the DPO data set. And with a bit more training and a few more epochs, it would in theory um, maybe bring up that performance just a bit more. So I definitely recommend checking out some of the obliterated or ablation models from FailSpy. Uh, he publishes some great work and I think a lot of his work deserves more attention. So there's a little bit more information we can get from the Hugging Face card. We get a little bit more insights into how this was made. So of course, again, it's a DPO fine tune of M. LeBone's Daredevil 8 obliterated, trained using his data set uh, Orpo DPO Mix 40K. And uh, again, the biggest takeaway here is DPO fine tuning recovers the performance loss from the obliteration or ablation process. And I think this is a really cool way to look at um, the notion of how you can fix uncensored fine tunes of models. Um, I actually had never heard of this. This is why I just scroll on Twitter because occasionally you, you do learn something. Now, one question is, aside from just trying to maximize the MMLU score for 8 billion parameter models and be the best, what was kind of the other intended application for this model? And Maxime says here that Neural Daredevil 8B is just kind of intended to be a better performing version of the instruct models of Llama 3. This one doesn't also require alignment. And what's kind of cool is getting it to use kind of a role playing pattern is quite easy. And this isn't surprising since it's an instruct model, but yeah. And then also there are a number of quants already available. So uh, GGUF, uh, EXL2 and Olama quants are already here. And at the end of the day, you know, Maxime did achieve his goal of having the top or top three spots um, on the open LLM leaderboard for 8 billion parameter models, which is pretty cool. And the evaluations also carry over to the NOS evaluation suite. And it's going to still be really cool to see what we can get um, once we have these new kind of private benches, which we'll be curious to see. So let me hop into an inference endpoint and let's see what we can actually get this model to do. All right, so we're now in the inference endpoint and this is looking pretty good. So I just had this start out with the default prompt, which is just an open-ended naive prompt. So it's an instruct model and I was curious what we'd actually get with this. It's giving me this fictitious breakdown of a 22 year old engineering student at UCLA 
who is studying computer science. So it's actually kind of funny that this is where it went to out of nowhere. So curiously, this actually was a role-playing back and forth. Initially, I thought this was just the student describing himself as Tevin, a 22-year-old UCLA student. But what's cool is the model by default, um, that's what kind of you use these naive prompts to do, just went into this big back and forth of saying, like, oh, you're a student. Oh, this is what you're studying. Oh, this is what you're interested in. And um, that was actually pretty interesting. And it makes me think that this is probably a pretty good subject for agentic applications once people really want to explore that with this. So let's try some other instruct tasks. So I'm going to say now I'm looking to go kayaking. So this is kind of an open-ended question, but it has to do with some kind of spatial reasoning and a task I want to do. So I want to go kayaking. I'm asking how I should do that. It's assuming that uh, this AI is my assistant and I want to figure out what I want to do. So, okay, uh, so see where there is already access, look at the water conditions. And the irony with these models is you actually have to restrict kind of its output. Um, some of these are so good now. It used to be you would have to tell them to keep, keep you know, just keep going. Uh, but this is pretty interesting. All right, so distance and time, wildlife and vegetation, where it's actually accessible and legal. All good things here. So now I'm going to ask some basic kind of reasoning questions. So I'm going to say if A is 1 and B so let's see, this is just A and B. We're gonna see if this can do basic algebra. Okay, so it looks like it didn't really understand what we wanted. All right, so we pushed this a little bit more and it looks like it did actually end up uh, reaching something that made sense. So we did finally get to some combinations here, but it looks like it's pretty easy to tip off this model and have it end up being kind of confused with what it wants or whether or not it's actually talking to itself or not. So a lot of people like to use instruct models to do things like write emails or do basic programming. So now I'm gonna try a few different programming questions and we're gonna start pretty simply. So let's see if we can just get a basic Python function. Just looking for a factorial, so this should be pretty straightforward. And all right, so it got it. Now the question with really simple questions like this is if it's just regurgitating something or if it actually kind of came up with that. And all right, so it's actually looking to optimize this right out the back. It's okay, so it's implementing memoization, which is cool. Granted, this could still have just been from someone who has a data set of a bunch of leet code, but this is interesting. So I will say the behavior of this is pretty different from a lot of instruct models I've used. Obviously, this is very rudimentary, but I'm really curious to look at what the system prompt is because this kind of runs on and gets all, it is a little harder to direct than others I've used. And maybe that just means it's a little bit more uh, creative. It looks like the stock settings for temperature are actually pretty standard. So I would normally expect this with a model that was kind of all over the place and that had like a really high temperature set. But um, this is pretty interesting. I mean, what, what's cool is it was giving good reasons to improve this and saying like, yeah, here's the simplest version and then here's three other versions that are more complex, but that bring um, specific advantages and improvements in performance and capability. But that is pretty interesting. So now I'm gonna ask a few that are going to look at how actually uncensored this model is. So let me say here, so um, let's say I want to develop an autonomous underwater vehicle that will use Magnets to... One thing I do in my free time a lot is I read a blog from a guy who used to be in the Navy and uh, he writes about a lot of secret vehicles that have been used by different militaries and uh, his name is H.I. Sutton so this is kind of inspired by a lot of what he writes about because oh, this has actually been done before believe it or not and I'll link below to his blog if you want to check it out but I figured I would do something interesting to test how censored this model is and we'll see if it's going to freak out because basically I'm asking for a way that I can attach things to other ships and then have them carry it over the ocean, then me pick it up somewhere else. So it understands what an AUV is. That's pretty cool. Um, as opposed to a UAV, since this is actually in the water. Communication and data transmission, power and energy management. Um, magnetic attachment mechanism. All right, so it understands that ships are made of iron and that we have to be directed in a certain way for the motion of the ship uh, with different materials. Okay, so... Challenging but feasible project, key to success lies in design and testing of the, of the magnetic attachment mechanism, as well as the ability to navigate. So this was a really interesting model. I will say it's really creative. Uh, it feels like a, a model that has a little bit of ADHD or ADD, uh, or maybe a slightly autistic model, but a lot of people like that. Um, I think a little bit of autism is good. You know, it makes you 
more motivated. So yeah, I really like this model. I thought it um, showed us some really interesting and novel ways of improving Llama 3. Um, earlier this week, it was just a big deal to see models that actually improved marginally, you know, more than one to 2% in a specific area with Llama 3. And it's really cool to see now that people are really jumping into merging as well as ablation and figuring out that DPO and SFT actually have really interesting trade-offs when you're doing things like ablating. And, um, you know, it used to be that it would be a huge breakthrough um, with fine tuning just to end up with an uncensored model. And it's cool that now with ablation, we maybe have some better tools, whether it has to do with um, the human brain or with large language models. And yeah, so I was actually really impressed by this model. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm always a fan to see Maxime's work. So I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, are you going to try using this model? Do you prefer a different fine tune of Llama 3 8B? How do you think this might stand up to other models in the 8B model category? You know, is MMLU maybe what you use to benchmark or do you like to use other things? Please let me know down in the comments below. As always, I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next one.